Hello there and welcome back to Electro Bananas. In video EB16 I reviewed the hardware of the Radtel RT880 and iRadio UV98 Plus which are functionally identical radios. This time I'm looking at the upgraded model which is the Radtel RT880G which adds integrated GPS and APRS capability. In this video I'm going to focus on the new GPS and APRS hardware. So if you haven't seen my teardown and hardware review of the non-GPS version, I suggest you check out EB16 first, as this field video builds directly on that foundation. And I'm really excited to announce that the channel has just passed 4,000 subscribers. I never imagined that we would get this many. So thank you very much for each and every one of you for supporting the channel. It really does help me grow and it helps me provide more detailed content. So thank you so much. Now I'm sure everybody's heard of GPS and you all know what that is, but what about APRS? Not everybody may know what this is. So it stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System and packet is a bit of a giveaway here. So what this is, is a small packet or snippet of data and that data can be the form of a message, a bit like an SMS message we send between our mobiles. Or it could be a bit of data which could be used to carry telemetry data such as your GPS coordinates or it could be speed information or weather related information such as temperature um, or humidity or even altitude it's used in weather balloons as well. The system was developed by the late Bob Brenninger way back in 1982 when it showed its first form and believe it or not it was first developed on an Apple II it shows how old it is then he enhanced it believe it or not on a VIC-20 before it progressed to something similar to what we have today but when you combine APRS with GPS in a handheld now that's when the magic happens because now your handheld can report its position to another handheld without any reliance on the mobile network so if you've got two of these handhelds communicating with each other, they will tell you where the other handheld is in terms of how far away it is and what direction. So you can see that's a really cool and powerful function. And this is why Radtel sometimes does a bundle package selling them in pairs at a discount. I'll leave a link in the description for one of these packages. Another cool thing you can do is set a starting point. And then as you move away from that starting point, it shows you how far you've gone and what direction you've gone as well. So you can always get back to where you started off from. And for you nerds out there, it's based upon the AX25 packet radio protocol and uses AFSK, that's frequency shift keying, for modulation of data using the Bell 202 protocol at 1200 baud. That's, that's just 1200 bits per second. And crucially, it's designed to operate on amateur radio bands. Typically, it's 144.39 megahertz, and you'll find that being used in North America and many other parts of the world. But it does differ uh, some countries or regions. So check your current region for the allocated APRS frequency. Now, if you wanted to extend the range of APRS communication greater than handset to handset, you've got the option of going through a special APRS repeater or you can even go globally by using something called an eye gate, which is an internet gateway. Okay, so I just skimmed the surface of APRS here and it is a very interesting and deep topic, but there's fortunately there's loads of good content on YouTube if you want to investigate further. Right, without any further ado, let's have a look at the hardware. Now to keep things simple, when I refer to GPS version of this radio, I refer to GPS plus APRS. And when I refer to non-GPS, I'm referring, of course, to no GPS and no APRS. Right, with that cleared up, on the left here, I have the non-GPS version, which I reviewed in my last video, EB16, which of course is the one branded by iRadio. And on the right, I have the GPS version, which of course is the Radtel RT880G. Now, the first difference I want to call out is not actually related to whether it has GPS or not. Uh, you can see that the main board on the iRadio is a UV98 version 1 of the main board. And then on the Radtel, 
it's a UV98 version 2 and it's dated April 2025 so a very recent board and then the displays look identical apart from there is a missing kind of bracket for the GPS antenna which of course the brackets in place for the Radtail GPS version. Now another uh, note it, another change I notice again I don't think it's related to GPS or not is can you see the screen on the ribbon cable which connects a keyboard to the main board and then you've got another ribbon cable or flex cable which goes to the mic speaker connection on the side and you notice in the iRadio it's not screened but in the Radtel GPS version it is of course the screen's no use of a, a ground connection on it so you can see on the main board on the Radtel you have you see this foam block with the flexible screen around it which is connected to ground so that squashes up against the ribbon cable which goes to the mic speaker connection the external mic speaker connection and provide grounding so obviously that's to reduce electrical noise and then you can see on version one of the main board a lot of vias. Looks like it's tying ground planes together. Whereas on version two, those vias seem to be absent. So to me, these changes point out that in the earlier versions, I think they were suffering from an internal noise uh, interfering with uh, radio reception and you see they made some efforts there to reduce it. Now as I was saying before I don't think these design enhancements are just for the GPS version. I suspect that if you just get a, a recent version of either the the iRadio non-GPS or the Radtail non-GPS or GPS versions you will find these changes or these improvements. Now talking of PCBs, I'd just like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay are my go-to for prototyping of PCBs. Simply upload your Gerber files, put in the parameters and quantities, and you get a quote instantly. In addition, they do PCB assembly, flex rigid PCBs, HDI PCs, CNC machining, and 3D printing. For more information, go to PCBWay.com and I'll leave a link in the description. Now, if you're eagle eyed, you'll notice some wires which look a bit out of place. You can see there's some wires at the top going to the volume control and a few wires there going up to the, the daughter board. These are from a Bluetooth audio modification I did that allows the audio from this radio to be transmitted to a Bluetooth speaker, a Bluetooth headphones or your car stereo or whatever um, and I provided details of how to do this in my video EB022 so if you fancy putting Bluetooth audio onto one of these check the video out. Now in my review of the non-GPS version we saw that there was this daughter board which is a multi-function daughter board which was designed ultimately to cater for HF with the 4732 GPS, APRS, and I also know you can see there it's got ANC, which I'm not actually sure what this might be for. It might be automatic noise cancellation, but not too sure. So in this non-GPS version of the daughter board, you can see that all we have in the top right there is the SI4732HF chip, and to the left, the voltage regulator for it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the non-GPS and GPS versions of the boards together. You can see that the non-GPS version is a version 1.1. There's so you can see the SI4732. And then the GPS version is version 1.3. Not sure what the differences are between the two. Here you can see the GPS module. And here you can see the APRS IC. And there's a voltage regulator, which you can see which is on both of them. It's a 3.3 volt regulator. Uh, and you see that supporting, in both cases, the HF4732. Um, we've got a few uh, uh, support components there. The crystal for the APRS chip. 
Let's just turn this around and have a, a closer look and focus on the GPS module which is an ATGM336H. Now this is actually a module, not an IC. It contains inside that shielding a microprocessor and uh, support components. Let's have a look at the data sheet for this. You see this is a BDS and GNS whole constellation positioning navigation module. Uh, BDS being the Chinese navigation system and GNS being the global uh, navigation system. Let's have a quick look through this. Now what we can see here, depending on the exact model of the module you get, it supports multiple different navigation systems, the American GPS, the Russian GLONASS, EU Galileo, Japanese and so on. So let's have a look at what version we've got. Okay, so the version we have is the Dash 3X version, which supports the global GPS and the Chinese BDS system. Doesn't support the Russian system. Okay, so let's have a look through here. So, um, okay, time for first six, 32 seconds. All right, that's pretty normal. Global link position or precision, 2.5 meters. And the first fix uh, it's got a sensitivity of 148 dBm, minus 148. But once you're locked on, uh, that improves to 162 dBm. So getting the first connection is a bit more difficult than holding on to it once you've got a lock. That's basically what it's saying. Power consumption is pretty good, uh, less than 25 milliamps at 3.3 volts. What else is there to write home about? Okay, the block diagram. See what else we've got. This is actually supposed to be a user guide, by the way, rather than a, just a discrete specification and pin layout. Now look at pin six, that's a connection to a battery. This is interesting, I'll come back to that in a minute. And then 16, 17, you've got I squared C bus, and then you've got R, um, RS-232 connection. Now here's the interesting thing about the VBAC connection. So if you have it connected, it supplies power to the module even when the module is switched off. So that it retains the RTC information and the GPS information. This means that when you reconnect on power on, it can simply resume the last connection it had. That's the hot connection. Whereas if you don't have that, it has to start again and you have to go through that 32 second or so initial contact. So in other words, if you have the battery, you have the capability of doing hot starts and connect within less than one second. If you don't, you have to do cold starts, which is around 35 seconds or so. Now on the RT880, I have measured the voltage on pin six with the power off and unfortunately it goes to zero volt. So there is no option of a hot start. So here we can see the information that we saw earlier on the sensitivity. Um, oh, okay, this is interesting. So the maximum speed that you can report from this thing or it can calculate is 500 and 15 meters per second, which is nuts. That's over a thousand miles an hour and maximum altitude 18 kilometers. So should be good enough for most people. So what else have we got? Okay, I like application circuits. Gets me excited. Now, if you look at this application circuit, it's for use with an ap uh, active antenna. And you can see here pin six connected to that backup battery, that all important backup battery, which we don't have, unfortunately. Maybe we could connect it to a supercapacitor or something. How about that for a mod? And here you can see an inductor being used to pass power to an active antenna. And in this circuit, you can see it being used for passive antenna, but with the addition of a low noise amplifier in between the antenna and the module. Now let's see what type of antenna we've got. See if it's active or passive. And I can see inductors and some sort of IC there. So this is an active antenna, as you can see there. Let's see what the model number is. 
in case you're interested. It's an AFC 1606, in case you know what that means. There you are, tiny. Now, in case you fancy nerding out and playing with one of these modules yourself, you can get them on AliExpress for a few dollars. See, it's exactly the same model as we've got. And you see you've got the connections there to interface it to an Arduino or whatever it is you want to control it with. On the back there, it's got, uh, let me see, it's got a 32 kilobit flash memory and a backup battery, which we haven't got on the radio. Uh, there's probably a voltage regulator, I don't know. And the connection to the antenna there. Now the antenna you get with it looks very similar to the one supplied with the radio. It's got a bit more screening on the active components there. And it's a little bit longer. It's HD 195001, if that means anything to you. But otherwise, uh, yeah, very similar. So I'll leave a link in the description just in case you want to get one of these yourself. Now, last but not least, let's have a look at the all-important APRS IC, which you can see there. Again, let's have a look at the data sheet. So you can see it's a modem or modulator demodulator. Um, and you can see there it works Bell 202 protocol at 1200 bits per second FSK that we need for APRS. You see in the block diagram, we've got the, the transmission section and the reception section. Ring detector and relay driver, that's because <laughs> it's designed to bolt onto a landline modem, believe it or not. That's how old these things are. Let's go down and have a wee look. Nice block diagram there. You've got to turn your head sideways to look at this. Sorry, guys. What else have we got that's interesting? RX is what it listens to. FSK turns on. TX is what it transmits on. You see you've got the I2C bus connection there to connect to microprocessor. Uh, circuit diagram. Okay, RX is what it's listening for those FSK turns on. And TX is what it's transmitting them on. There's an I squared C bus there. As you can see, crystal. Ring detector, we won't be using those, that's for sure. All right, so I think that summarizes the key features of the APRS chip. Now, these FSK modulation tones that I was talking about are actually, of course, in the audio spectrum. So just in case you're listening on the APRS frequency and you hear a APRS signal, so this is what it will sound like. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this review up now. So thank you very much for joining me on the review of this really interesting radio. As usual, I will leave links to discount codes and other ordering information for everything I've shown you in this video, including the GPS module. And don't forget to leave me your comments. I'd love to know what you think of this radio and in particular the APRS and GPS system. Do you have one yourself? How are you getting on with it? Do let us know. And as usual, if you found this video interesting or useful, please do remember to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me bring more content like this to you. And until next time, don't burn yourselves on those soldering irons. Take care and 73.